passing over, but they don't know no better. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love Wu-Tang, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now, today we're going to be talking about Wu-Tang and American Saga, Season 2, Episode 2. This is the recap. Now, I dropped the Episode 1 recap for you guys. Um, now, we're going to talk about Episode 2, and I will be doing the Episode 3 recap as well. Um, probably push it out probably in a day or two for you guys. We'll, I will have it out before episode four airs, so don't worry. But the first episode was very good. The second episode, once again, it delivered, man. And I can't wait to talk about it. If I miss anything, you guys let me know. My Wu-Tang fans, I know y'all are deeply you know, invested into this show. So if I miss anything, you guys let me know as well. So let's get into it, man. What did we see in episode two? Now, your boy Bobby... He, of course, is being acquitted from those charges from the last episode. We saw that. He's on the phone with his brother, Divine. Divine is getting out the halfway house. He's done so well. It's time for him to get up out this house. And that is good news. Of course, he is telling Bobby that he's done so good, that he's proud of him. Uh, now, Divine, of course, he, you know, was talking to the manager at the halfway house. The dude is very proud of him. He tells Divine, look, he has a guy that owns this construction business and he's going to put out a good word for him and this is good news for divine because now he can go out there and get a legitimate job now we get to power and we ain't talking about power we're talking about this power and we ain't talking about bummy ass ray ray but this power he of course is telling your boy shy look just go ahead this hustle let's get this money plain and simple i need somebody to cook up something for me you know what i'm saying let's get this money but see shy ain't known that man he's all about his music this time around, he's taking it very seriously, and he's like, nah, man, I'm cool. I ain't about that life no more. I'm going to go ahead and hit to the studio, you know what I'm saying, and get my music taken care of. And that's a good thing because this dude really needs to invest in his music. He goes to Firehouse Studios, and this is where he's going to put in that work, and a lot of different things are going to change for him. But I'm glad that he did head to that studio because different things did happen. Um, of course, he brings his tape with the beat that Bobby had on there. Um, Rufus is telling him, nah, man, this tape is messing up all my equipment. We got high quality equipment up in here. And I don't know about this tape. But of course, Shia's like, man, I'm spitting on this beat. This is the beat that I'm spitting on. We already know Bobby. He made a beat for each member of Wu-Tang. This was the beat that he made for Shia. Now, we get to the movie, and of course, they're watching the eight diagram pole fighter. Now, Bobby tells his family, like, this movie to him is basically about a person that lose, loses everything. He comes back, and he regains it. Um, we know later on in the episode, his mom kind of explains it to him, her perception of this particular movie. But this is what Bobby sees it as of right now. You know what I'm saying? Losing everything, coming back, and gaining everything once again now i know his mom did tell him that she believed that this movie was about you know the family the brothers coming all together and succeeding in life see bobby did not see that at first but later on in the episode when his mom explained that to him he kind of got it now we get to your boy son young odb and of course he's getting his hair braided by his chick and all of a sudden we hear a knock on the door and the look on his face, you can already tell that something was up. Something was definitely up. Now, her baby dad is coming in there. He got a bad attitude. He's talking about who is this. Like, dude, you don't live there. I mean, I understand your son, of course, lives there or whatever. He come, he's coming over there or whatever. But the dude was straight up tripping. Once your boy ODB goes outside, they straight up jumped him. I'm looking like, okay, I see what time it is. And you already knew something bad was going to happen. They sit up here and jumped the man, didn't do no one-on-one -on -one or anything, talking about don't come around here. Every time you see this dude, just straight up whoop him. And I'm like, man, come on. Like, you got to do something about this because this dude is going to be a problem, especially if you continue to allow this dude to put his hands on you. Now we get back to your boy Divine, Nia. Now, of course, they're talking about a family. She wants to have a kid. Divine is like, man, I don't know about that. We need to get money first. We need to have more security within the family. She is telling him she's been promoted to manager. Um, Divine said, well, once I get my job and we start saving up some more money, we can discuss having a child. And of course, the topic of discussion was, you know, her being this manager at this movie store, she's able to dub these movies or whatever. And she's doing this for Gary. Do you guys think something is going on between her and Gary or is it just a, you know, a family type thing? I don't know. 
I'm going to look more into this because it did seem kind of awkward to me when she said, well, I'm just doing this for Gary, you know, but doesn't seem like nothing major right now. We got to wait and see how it's all going to play out. But speaking of Gary, he's out there hustling, trying to sell these movies and get his money, right? And it makes me believe that the deal that he had with Tommy Boy in season one probably did not go so well because if he's out here selling bootlegs, that means it definitely didn't go well. Your boy ODB comes and he's like, man, look, I don't got beat up by my uh, girl's baby's dad. He was pissed off about me. Now, of course, Gary is telling him he needs to just go back and talk to him like a man um, and just understand it in his way. I mean, how would you feel if somebody was talking to your baby's mom? So now, of course, a sign will go back and try to do it Gary's way. Now, Linda comes downstairs and once again, they start talking about the movie. And as I told you guys earlier, she gave Bobby her perception of the movie about the brothers coming together. Um, they start talking about music. Bobby has one of her old records by the OJs from Ohio. I'm from Ohio, so of course this scene was very good to me. Bobby's inspiration is from a lot of different artists. This dude is very talented, and I'm glad that they put this in there, just showing so many different elements of this legendary group. It wasn't just one artist. It was many different artists, many different talents and music styles. Now, your boy, Shy, he's in the studio, and Clifton tells him, your time has ran out. You know what I'm saying? You got to go. Of course, Shy did not know. He's like, look, I can pay you later or whatever. And he's like, well, I'm going to keep your music until you pay me. Um, Shy is not looking like he's having the best episode so far, but he won't give up. He will definitely come back to the studio and definitely try to pay off this man and get his music back. Now, we get to your boy Method Man, and as you can hear, he is spitting his verse off Method Man from that legendary Wu-Tang 36 Chambers album. Um, and of course, we officially hear him say look i'm method man and then your boy rebel was out there he's like man you got a sweet name how you get that and all this and he's like man i gotta figure out what type of name i'm going to give you know myself and right after that he walks up down the hallway and writes inspector on the door so now he has his name you notice and everybody's starting to get their you know their wu-tang name in this episode and as the, of course the season goes everybody else will continue to get their original names from the group like i said in my episode one recap it would have been sweet if they could have kept joey badass for the show for this character but he is busy filming power book three raising canaan so so be it. i mean this rebel is definitely doing you know i think he's doing very well so far um then we get back to your boy asan and he tries to go and approach this in gary's way trying to talk to this dude and he doesn't want to hear it he straight up socks him once again i'm looking like man ain't no way like he is catching all types of punishment trying to do things the right way um he didn't really do anything wrong he just keep catching beat downs eventually he's gonna have to figure out something now your boy rebel he's in the hall the stairwell actually um and of course he put the graffiti on the wall inspector on the you know on the wall and the undercover cops was up there they caught him and they you know checked what he had of course he had some product on him and i'm like man this is a, a bad time to be getting locked up right because we know that bobby is trying to get the group back together he wants everybody to become one that way this group can be very powerful together as one but it's kind of hard to make that happen if rebel is getting locked up it's going to be a little bit different so hopefully he's able to get out soon um we don't know when, but eventually he's going to have to, especially if the group's going to become one. Uh, now we get to your boy, You God. He's kicking it with Method Man. Of course, You God is pissed off about what happened to Rebel, talking about, he, you know, if he can get his hands on one of these undercover cops, what he would do to him. They're playing a lot of Snoop and Dre in this uh, particular episode, just showing us the time frame on how hot they were. You God, of course, you know, in Method, they're talking about Bobby. And Method is telling him, look, he played his tape for Bobby. Bobby is filling him. And, you know, maybe it's something that he can look forward to in the future. We get to your boy, Shy. And, of course, Devon is out there. They're waiting for this little bus or whatever. And y'all felt that tension. There's still some issues between these two. And it's not over yet. Eventually, they're going to have to have a discussion. They can't keep avoiding each other. I mean, I guess Devon, he was like, look, I just got off. I just got out this halfway house. I am not trying to have issues with this dude. So I'm just going to wait for the next bus. But eventually they're going to have to sit down and talk about their past. Then we get back to the studio. Of course, Clifton um, played um, shy stuff for everybody. They got Eric Sermon in there. He's in the studio putting in some work, 
telling Shy how good his music is and maybe they can work on something um, later in the future when he's done with his project. Now, your boy Clifton is telling Shy, look, don't worry about paying me back because Shy's like, look, I got the money that I owed you. And he's telling him, look, I done played your stuff for my cousin. He's a, you know, a music producer. All you got to do is perform for him. Don't worry about the money. And, you know, I will set this meeting up between both of you. Now your boy Shy is happy. He's like, bet. Like, I'm going to be on it. I'm going to come back. We're going to definitely set up this meeting and get to this work. Now we get to your boy Rebel. He's locked up. But doesn't mean he's just down and out. He's in there making sure he's getting his lyrics down. He is making sure when it's time to get released, he's going to be ready. You know what I'm saying? He's in there making sure he is on his a game and that's good that is good that he's in there staying motivated and getting ready for his opportunity because you already know it's going to come and it's going to come very very soon so it's a good thing that he's going to stay sharp with his lyrics and that pen now we get to your boy divine he goes he meets with the construction worker and he's telling him look i will work for free give me a week trial and i will show you i'm a good worker this dude is like, don't worry about that. I will pay you. Um, we know that Divine is a hard worker. It is good that he's actually out and he's looking to do something very positive within his life. We get back to young ODB. And after watching this flick, after sitting out there with Gary, he's watching this flick and he's like, okay, I'm motivated. I am a one man army. I don't need everybody else to fight my battles for me. I can go handle it myself. And this is what he takes. This is warrior mentality. He goes back and he meets up with this, of course, girlfriend's baby's dad, and he lays him straight out, y'all. He lays this dude straight out. Didn't give him dude a time to even talk. Straight dropped him off. But you already knew that was gonna come back on him, right? Now, your boy Bobby and Dennis, they're talking music, talking, you know, the future. And Bobby is telling him, look, man, you know, I gotta go back to New York, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I can't sit here, I wanna focus on this music thing. Do you wanna come back? Of course, Dennis is like, man, I got a family, I can't go, you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But Bobby still wants to put this group together. He has, of course, beats, floppy disks with beats for each character of the Wu-Tang, and he just wants the best for everybody. But eventually this group will become one soon. Now, we get back to young ODB. He's having a conversation with his chick. She's telling him, Oh, my baby's dad, he's right behind you. He got a shotgun. They coming. What are you going to do? Are you just going to sit here? And as I said, your boy ODB was inspired by that that uh, flick he was watching. He's like, man, screw all that. I'm good. I'm a one-man army. Soon as the dude got close, he turned around so quick, hit this karate move, took the shotgun right out of dude's hand. The whole little crew ran away. Your boy ODB ain't playing around. He had me cracking up in this episode, man. I did not like how them dudes kept jumping him, but I'm... I'm glad that he got the best of them when it was all said and done. Now we get back to Shy and his mom. He is telling her he's about to go meet with this producer. Um, this is probably going to be his big shot to, of course, make a, you know what I'm saying, a good deal. You know what I'm saying? Get them up out of there. Maybe this is the big one. And it's kind of sad because he had this conversation with his mom. He goes and he's kicking it with Method Man, of course. And all of a sudden, this dude in the hall is having an argument. I believe his name is Day Day. He's in there having an argument. And next thing you know, he shoots his gun. Not necessarily trying to shoot nobody. He's just trying to scare the person he's having an argument with. Shoots his gun, not even looking. And it hits Shy right in the leg, I believe. And it, I mean, I believe the bullet went right out the other side. But still, you shot this man like, really? And he had the nerve to say, look, man, you're going to be all right. Don't worry about it. You good. You're going to be all right. Like, really? This dude was supposed to go meet with the producer. Like, are you crazy? You just messed up a big opportunity for Shy. As I said, Shy started out in an okay episode. It was looking good for him for a little bit in the middle of the episode. And then all of a sudden, boom, he gets hit with this. He gets shot. And I know he's pissed off. He's like, okay, now my opportunity is probably over. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to figure out something else. He's probably not even thinking about that. He's probably just thinking about trying to recover from this, this shot. Then we get to your boy Bobby. And as you can see with these floppy disks, this is old school right here. You know what I'm saying? Straight up 90s style floppy disks with each name on them with different beats for each of the members of the Wu-Tang. Of course, Bobby's chick, she is kind of sad. She's like, can I be a part of the Wu-Tang? She doesn't want Bobby to go back to New York. But this is something that Bobby has to do. He tells her, you know what I'm saying, that he will be here for her when the time is right. And I hope that does work out for the two. Um, of course, his mom's like, look, you go to New York, you make sure you do the right thing this time. Do not get into any type of trouble. I wish the best for you. Learn from your mistakes. And this is what Bobby is going to do. This dude has pretty much lost everything. 
just like he was saying in the movie, but he would use his mom's perspective of that movie about gaining everything, becoming one, using the family to succeed in life. So this is why he's going to go back to New York, of course, trying to bring everybody back together as a unit to form this legendary group. And that's what he needs to do, man. This time, Bobby is more motivated. After being locked up and seeing what he has saw in a very short amount of time, he is motivated more than ever. Now, I believe these events are six months after season one. So when we saw season one, this is supposed to be six months later. And just think about all the stuff that they've been through in just those six months. It's crazy, right? I mean, you had the opportunity of a lifetime. It did not go well with Tommy Boy. It was a learning experience. Of course, Bobby did not get to do what he really wanted to do with Tommy Boy. And that was one of the main issues being signed to that label. From the looks of it, his cousin Gary did not have the best outcome with them as well. But when they all form together, this will be the best opportunity that they will have being there for each other and becoming one. Um, I can't wait to see the rest of the season. I will be doing episode three recap very soon. I probably have it out in a couple days for you guys and we'll have it out before episode four airs. And after that, we'll be getting these recaps um, dropping very quickly um, after the show airs. So I may do quick thoughts, early impressions first. It just depends. But we are definitely going to be talking about Wu-Tang season two. I'm glad you guys supported the first episode recap that I dropped. Um, so we're going to continue this journey, man. But thank you guys to all the Wu-Tang fans. Thank you guys for all the love and all the support. I'm learning as I'm going. Um, and I appreciate all y'all knowledge, man. We killing it, man. And let's get ready for episode three. And I will be dropping that episode four later on when they air it. But thank you guys for all the love, all the support. Let me get on out of here, man. It's your boy, Mark Dart. I'm out. Peace.